right. Yeah, it's been a joy uh, getting to know the Smith family, and we got to hear a wonderful, um, authentic message from our friend Cheryl last night, last night, last week. And uh, now we get to hear Adam, who might defend himself from last week. I don't know. <laughs> but we'll let you have your side of the story. But I'm excited to hear what you have to share. So welcome. All right. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, give me a moment. I'm an accountant. I've got to get my computer started. So, and for the record, I will say, if anything, Cheryl was too kind with her descriptions last week. So, I, I will say that one. So, I, what I, I really enjoyed Cheryl's sharing last week, giving a point of perspective of, of where she's come from and what she's gone through. So, before, I really want what I share tonight to be more of a conversation. That's why I'm sitting down. I'm not here to lecture or, or I don't have anything that that coherent. <laughs> so instead, I want this to be a conversation. And a part of that, I want to just kind of share a little bit uh, of where I've come from. So before we get into that, tonight's topic I had put down was, uh, I believe we, we ended on uh, body life. There will be blood. Um, I did want that to be a little bit catchy, because I think that's there's some key things there. But first, I don't come from a charismatic background. I don't have Amish family like Cheryl, but I came from a very conservative upbringing in church, and we had the Father, Son, and the Holy Bible. So when it came to uh, works of the Spirit, those were wonderful historic things to read about in the book of Acts. And uh, if you wanted to, uh, to hear the Lord's voice, then you could read your Bible out loud or ask a friend to read it to you. And uh, that was how you heard God's voice. So I, I grew up very Pharisaical. But uh, through a series of things that happened throughout our lives, Cheryl and I, which she mentioned, we got married really early. We moved to Colorado, went to a bunch of different churches. Um, but a house church group that we actually came to was one, was the first time I'd heard not only about grace, but about the fact that uh, the Christian life, life as part of the body is not meant to be left led alone. I mean, I kind of was a, uh, a victim of that uh, rugged individuality and independence that uh, Americans, we, we idolize so much, kind of Lone Ranger Christianity. Um, and I got really excited at the idea of being part of a body and, and participating in more. And so that's some of what I want to talk about tonight, because I kind of, I keep hearing these, these themes coming up about relationships. You know, Vicki shared about, you know, don't withhold your voice because you don't know what you're stealing from, from someone else that God wants to use you for. And it just is really exciting to see everything happening at, uh, at Joyland right now, because we actually were attracted to Joyland for that record. I, I, we decided to start coming here after coming to a Dan Moeller conference where uh, I watched Dan and Larry and Catherine Toon all up on stage with different opinions, and they didn't have to agree on everything, but they agreed on Jesus, and that was enough. Um, and I thought that was incredibly inspiring. So, and I think that's that's one of the things we want to keep keep central as we look at this uh, and think about about different things, because I am I am excited to see what God's doing in His body. I I mean, we talked about Dan and Becky and the future of the church, the future of Grace. I don't think it's going to look like what it looked like before. I don't think this is going to necessarily be the same. Riley shared how, you know, the current church model doesn't seem to be pulling in the younger younger folks like, like it used to. And what does that look like? And I think one of the most amazing things we have going on here is the fact that we have an open mic. We have the chance to speak. We have a chance to, to participate. And so I want to talk a little bit more about what does that look like as part of a fully functioning body and what is the, what's cast that vision of the bride of Christ? Because it's in, increasingly impressed upon me that as much as he loves each of us individually, that he is absolutely captivated by the bride. And we're, we're all one part of the bride, not, uh, not the entirety. 
You know, Solomon, Solomon might have wrote that line about your nose is like a tower, but I don't think he fell in love with just the nose. There, there was a little bit more in the package if you read. Um, and I think that's something to keep in mind. But first, I, I did want to start with one quote. I just came across it the other day, and I thought it was really, really good. It's from St. Basil the Great. It says, every theological statement falls short of the understanding of the speaker. Our understanding is weak, and our tongue is even more defective. So keep that in mind. <laughs> so in, in looking at this, uh, I'd like to, to kind of propose the question to think about is, because I, I, I got captivated by this image of the body of Christ working together, functioning, focusing, living from Christ's life together, and how we might consider how we can, can move forward and explore this even, even further. And I think that's, that's huge because none of us are truly complete on our own. Not, I mean, I know we have everything in Christ. I'm not questioning the gift. But uh, we are more together than we are separate. And I think that uh, in looking at that, the centrality of Christ and living from his, his thing has been laid upon, upon my heart as we, we look at this and consider as a, as a body, as we move forward, what, what can we do to spur one another on and live in, in true community? Because in, in looking in the, the New Testament, we see that uh, they pulled all their belongings at one point. They gathered in the house. You know, 1 Corinthians 14, 26 is one of my favorite verses. What then shall we say, brothers? When you come together, everyone has a psalm or a teaching, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. And all of these must be done to build up the church. When we look at the look at the, the New Testament as well, there's 59 one another's that occur throughout the New Testament. This is a life we're meant to live together and to encourage one another. And we get some of that great experience through the Tuesday night Tuesday night uh, LOL group and other things, the ascensions. It's always amazing to me how the Lord will reveal, uh, well, in an ascension in particular, uh, even if I don't see it then, what He'll bring to light from someone else. And as we as we move into the move into the future, I want to just I'll open it up for for discussion. And Mike, what would it look like for us to to fully function and move beyond some of our our traditions and comfort zones to to really trust and wait on the Lord? We had a wonderful time on a, a Tuesday night the other week, sitting and waiting on the Lord to see what He would share with us, um, which is hard. We want to fill the awkward silences, but I'm someone who would have said that uh, I couldn't hear God's voice until a year ago, and now I hear God's voice, and that is that is exciting. And I have to say, I've I grew up reading the Bible. I've read it multiple times. I've been part of churches all my life, but a personal indwelling spirit and hearing hearing the Lord's voice, I wouldn't trade that for for any book. Um, he personally knows and loves and has something for each of us to share. Uh, on that note, in just kind of an encouragement for sharing with others is, uh, Cheryl and I shared some information with her, her aunt in Indiana who's going through a very painful divorce right now. Um, she was just very, very discouraged and we, we just asked, we just both prayed, listened to what Jesus said and shared with her that she's loved. She was loved before she prayed a prayer she was, she's just as loved now. Nothing has changed. A lot of things that we talk about at Joyland and we almost take for granted um, because this is, this is repeated. We are encouraged in this body a lot, which is wonderful. Um, but that was, that was kind of groundbreaking for her coming from a guilt mentality. And she, she just read that out loud with, a, with her, her brother in the room who never thought he was smart enough to know Jesus. And he he actually was brought to tears at the idea of God loving him without him praying a prayer, without him doing anything. Um, and if you were to, to ask Cheryl or, Cheryl or I, I'm pretty sure we'd tell you there was nothing in there that was, uh, you know, this wasn't uh, William Shakespeare, this wasn't classic literature, it was just sharing the truth and speaking it. Because we don't know when we plant a seed what's going to, what's going to happen, what's going to take root. And in looking at that, at that tonight, um, there was one thing I received when, when 
visioning and journaling. I think the word we most often use here is ascend um, this morning that I wanted to uh, wanted to share before I spoke a little bit more. And that is, I was, I, I was praying this morning and I, I saw Jesus sit down in the, uh, in the chair next to me. I was sitting outside at our patio table and he sat down to drink coffee with me, which was already pretty amazing. I'm gonna, gonna say that's, that's already awesome. Um, and he began to talk about the bride. Um, and what he, what he told me this morning was, is I love her, Adam. More than this universe can bear, more than you can know, she's so very lovely and perfect for me. I don't just see her today where she is in time. I am beyond time. I see who she really is and has been for all time and will be publicly crowned and proclaimed at our wedding feast. I love her so, and she is hope to me. But Adam, she has been misused and believes herself the concubine of a wrongful master, not enga the engaged fiance of heaven's king. She's chopped up and separated and scattered, her members desiring me personally, but I marry no one alone. I didn't fall in love with her for her nose or neck or any specific part or member on its own. I love and care for everything about her, but I am captivated by her whole person. Um, and so in, in looking at that, what's on my heart as we're looking at, looking at changing culture and changing things is what does a, a living, true body of Christ look like? And what is it, how does that compare to, to things we've done, things we've tried, things we've been blessed by? And how my challenge is how patient we're willing to be as we explore this. Because the body of Christ is alive. We all live off the indwelling life of Christ. It was the Holy Spirit and his spirit poured out on Pentecost that exploded across the entire world. And that's, this was... Uh, things that grow take time. I'm sure you can ask Ronnie, our, our resident gardener, how many amazing crops he's had that popped up overnight. And I don't think, probably not very many. I mean, there's the only thing I could think of is mushrooms, and uh, they're about as likely to kill you as make you happy, so it may not be the best example. Um, but I think sometimes this means that uh, considering how we, might, how we might stumble as we learn to, to walk with one another. And I think in, in part of that is just to consider how do, we, how do we live life as a community day to day? Because what I watch and I see is one of the most beautiful things you'll see here at Joyland is the conversation happening before, before our service, after our service. You'll see the small groups and the ascensions. How do we bring this as a, as a body together and encourage those members that, uh, that have have a hesitance to share their voice, to, to maybe overrule some of us who might talk a little more than we're supposed to. Um, I did warn Larry that if he ever made me preach, I'd, I'd give you the 10 reasons why you're going to hell. Um, not gonna do that tonight. <laughs> so, but in, in looking at that, it seems that there is a, a spirit of, of focusing on Christ first and foremost and central in everything that the, the believers talked about Christ, they shared Christ. You couldn't be around them without hearing about this. And this should fill our, our speech and in our, our manner and how we can, can grow out of it. And how do we, how do we avoid the, how do we avoid the comfortable and learn to participate with Christ together differently than we do alone? Um, what I do at my work day, how I pray, you know, who I speak with, what I share, is probably going to look different than when I gather with my family here. Because I've, I've always desired a family. That was the most exciting thing about not having to be a lone ranger Christian, was that you could be part of something, and you could just be one part of it, and you could still contribute. And a, a vision that I caught a while ago was the vision of there's different, different words for it, different thoughts for it, but the idea of a body of believers that would gather together and simply wait on the Lord and pursue him first and be willing to, to lay down as an organic body their, 
their own, their own doctrines, if you will, everything but Jesus, and learn to live from him together. And that means, you know, in looking at that, um, how can we encourage this as we move forward, especially as a small church? We're a small church. We're, it's a beautiful church. I think that um, how do we gather in such a point? Because, like, I'll be honest with you, I do... I don't love public speaking. I didn't uh, didn't necessarily uh, desire this, and I'm looking at a whole bunch of eyes looking back at me right now. So my personal vote would maybe we'd rearrange the seating a little bit, just just a thought. <laughs> um, but uh, I've seen seen bodies of this where we would where where believers will gather together and actually seek the Lord together, speak only to the Lord, and move to the point where. Uh, just focusing and desiring what he has um, and building each other up. And one of the biggest parts of that was getting to know the other members of the body. What Cheryl shared last week is huge to that. I mean, that's, that's my wife that shared, and somehow I feel like I know her better, which is a little bit probably scary. Maybe I need to talk to Tim about that, but it's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, and I, I desire to grow and know each, each one of you more in this way so we can speak through one another to one another to the glory of, of Christ. And I think that's one of the most exciting things is we're, we're moving this direction with the Snapchats and we're hearing everyone's voice. They share what they're passionate about. Sometimes it might be a direct lesson. I liked what Jeremy shared last week about the, uh, the beauty of creation, how we're individually made. And I think there's a lot of amazing mirrors of that in the spirit. It says we'll do even greater things. I don't think we even have an exhaustive list of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I think we're going to see a lot more in these days. Um, there's a lot of talk about the, the order of Melchizedek and all these wonderful things that are, that are coming, and we know these were promised. And how do we, how do we make room for this to take, to take place? And I think that uh, what's on my heart is to suggest, as we look at this, is what are we doing that's starting to see fruit? Because I'm seeing fruit, and I'm encouraged by the Snapchats. I'm encouraged by hearing the guest speakers. I'm encouraged by hearing the voices, because I don't have every all the answers. I don't have all of this. Um, I don't think Larry's going to claim he has all the answers anytime soon. Um, and seeing the chance for the church to, to spread its wings and, and, and grow. Because the early church, when we look at it as it spread, it was a community. It was a body. It was almost entirely urban. As a country boy, I almost resent that. Um, but it was urban because they lived life together. It was almost impossible to, to get that intimacy in that day and age without being close together. I mean, and take, take days to walk 50 miles. I mean, it's, it's, you couldn't really just get on Skype and join an ascension via Zoom like we can today. Um, but I would, I would suggest that we, we pray and consider and ask the Lord just in this, this time and this year what, to, what he has for us in terms of as we're considering where we apply our time personally as a body and just in our daily lives. How can we connect with more believers? I'm, I'm kind of an introvert. I drive to Woodland Park now for breakfast on Thursdays because I desire community. Grandmother's Kitchen has great food. It's not that great. I'm going to be very honest. We have, we have probably the best server I've ever, ever met that takes care of our table. But uh, I otherwise wouldn't drive to it. Um, because there's so much to learn from each other. When I talk to Tim, when I talk to Richard, when we hear different things, um, it's strengthening each other. So I guess I would, I would ask, and it's, it's an open mic to look at this, if there's any thoughts how we might more fully engage and, and live life together, because I want this to, to be a conversation. How do, we, how do we take some of the lessons we're learning on this sabbatical as, as Larry and Vicki aren't, uh, aren't here to, to serve us to their own exhaustion? <laughs> I mean, that's uh, how we can learn to, to step and, and grow together and what we can do to, to apply that to impact our, our world together. Um, I would, my, 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 my thing, I'll kind of stop talking for a bit then, is I, I would suggest that uh, part of it is, is we, can, we can go to the Lord in prayer even right now, and we can just ask him to, to reveal what he has, what he wants to share. I mean, it's an open mic. We can, can, can brainstorm and talk about this right now too. 
But if we don't have perfect, if we don't have a fully fleshed idea, but we're open to the idea, I would suggest we could even just, just pray together and see what it looks like. Because in the early church, apostles would plant a church, somehow share the image, the vision, the indwelling life of Christ with these complete heathens. And they would share it, and then they would leave sometimes in a matter of weeks. They'd leave in six to eight weeks. And somehow that church would thrive. And they didn't, most of them, it wouldn't have mattered if they had a Bible because they couldn't read it anyway. I mean, they had nothing but the Spirit in one another. And how we can, can move towards, move maybe away from some of the traditional models. And what does it look like to do this as a team sport, for lack of a better analogy? And it's a terrible analogy because there shouldn't be winners and losers. Um, but how can, we, how can we function in such a way? And what are we willing to, to sacrifice for greater intimacy? Because relationships are hard. Relationships... There's a passage that we all love about iron sharpening iron, but we forget something about iron sharpening iron. Uh, that means some iron got knocked off, <laughs> and it's a painful thing. Um, because if you're truly in a relationship with someone, the people who have spoken the most life into me have also had the, the, sharpest, the sharpest implements to hurt me if I took what they said wrong, because I had to open up my heart to them. And just to receive, to receive the good, you also expose yourself to the bad but to ask the Lord to do the impossible, which is to make a group of completely different people from completely different backgrounds, uh, with completely different tastes. I'm probably one of the small subset here who still likes hymns. Um, <laughs> that's okay. Um, find a way to worship the Lord beyond our preferences and comfort zones. And what are we willing to, to lay down to do that? Are we willing to, to gather and have a meeting that kind of it's like a family dinner that isn't the record breaker. Maybe it's not the happiest Thanksgiving ever. <laughs> Maybe it's just another meal together pursuing Christ, learning of one another. Maybe it's, maybe it's uh, giving Laurel and some of the, the worship team a break. And, and I'm, I did go to a church of Christ, so take this as you will. Learning to sing a cappella, even if some of you are also gifted as the cave troll in your local caroling group as I am. I, I have silenced a Baptist caroling group one Christmas because uh, it was funnier to listen to me saying than it was to actually sing to those poor families in their homes. Um, but what can we do to, to stumble together and work as a body? So I'd like to, to open it up at this point. If anyone has any other, any other thoughts or, or, or ways we might pursue this or ways they've, they've done it together. And I filled enough awkward silence with ums, so I think I'll just stop for a bit. Being a part of Joyland for as long as I have, we have gone through so many changes uh, from a seating arrangements, tables to no tables, back to tables, to divans, chairs, comfortable stuff, circles, um, little, big, and it's all trying to get us out of our comfort zone and to um, see if, it, if there's something else that works, uh, because we don't want to fall into the mold, but it seems like we you know, always tend to. I mean, we have the, where our worship team is on the platform. We all, we, once we talked about having the worship team around in the, in the round, but how do we do that with wires and stuff? And, and so it's, it's um, and then to minister to the body in a, in a in a way that um, is uh, uplifting and that everybody can receive. And, um, and you, you suggested or you mentioned um, seating, because we've changed our seating many times. Do you have any suggestions on the seating arrangement? I would, personally, I would lean to away towards anything that, that looks to be spectator and, and performer. Um, because you know, for myself as a as a nervous person talking right now, I feel kind of like the vaudeville performer waiting for the big hook to pull me off the stage. Well, we have it over here, so we're just <laughs> so, we're waiting. It's you haven't said anything uh, to to draw the hook. I'll, I'll, I'll work harder. Uh, 
so I mean, but gathering in a circle around, I mean, basically there's something about, in, it seems like in the most organic conversations we have, people just tend to naturally gather looking at one another. There's normally not one person on the stage. Richard, even you're on, on stage right now just to walk up to a mic like this versus, uh, I, as I understand it, we had some ball mics at one point we could, we could toss around and they're very prone to problems, so maybe that's not a great thing to bring up. But, um, but, uh, but the idea of, uh, I would challenge um, us to consider that, uh, well, truthfully, there's about, there's about 22 people in the room right now, give or take, and uh, I am allowed to, to average because I'm, I'm not on the clock. I don't have to count as an accountant right now. But we have 20-ish people in the, in the room we could easily gather in a in a relatively small space, and yet we're we're scattered around. And I'm I'm going to get, you know, tennis neck if I if I look back and forth from Trudy to, to to Larry, like this, and just bring that openness to it. Even I'd suggest what works well and surprisingly well is on our Tuesday nights at the LOLs that um, we've got people on Zoom that are that are joining, but um, somehow it really works, and. Uh, that's just a, a thought. There's a lot of what I'm sharing and the thoughts actually come from uh, some materials published by an author called Fra named Frank Viola and shared about the idea of organic church and the, the apostles planting it and learning to express the body of Christ together. Um, so that's, that's something I would suggest because I would say that we're a very small church that in, in some ways operates as if we're much bigger because that's just the way we've gotten accustomed to doing it. Um, and because that's it does it does work for a number of us well we're definitely open to suggestions on on to do anything in our body uh, to stimulate and to bring forth conversation um, young people we'd love to have young people Riley if you could give some help in that area that would be wonderful uh, but uh, yeah it's it's so uh, Dan? Yeah, yeah, there. Um, yeah, so, so let's go to the first statement I think Richard said um, about, about um, exiting your comfort zone. It's like God gave me an instant picture and said, our comfort zone goes with us. It's kind of like the verse that says, wherever you step your foot, that will be your territory. Because as soon as we, you know, step out of the comfort zone, essentially that becomes a new thing that we're comfortable with. And so we can kind of get rid of some of that fear and recognize we're just taking new territory. So anyway, just a little short comment. Um, and part of that is, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a book out there called Pagan Christianity uh, by George Barna and uh, Frank Viola. I know I've seen it on, the, on Jen's bookshelf. I'm sure some of you have probably read, read this before about where a lot of our traditions come from. Um, and the church, the, the liturgy of the service hasn't substantially changed in a number of years. Um, but it actually was originally adopted more from, from pagan backgrounds. Um, and a large part of that is Constantine. If you want to hear some strong opinions on Constantine, ask Jen Beamer. She'll share with you. Um, <laughs> and, but looking at it is how the other thing, like I said, like, like you said, Richard, there's a really good question. Well, how do we do it? And how do we put the, all the chords and stuff? Uh, I, would, I would question, do we, does the Lord need all the, all the chords and all the things we've, we've become accustomed to? Um, so for example, you know, I, I am not a natural singer, so I really, I can appreciate singing and, and having music so loud nobody else has to suffer with me uh, as, I, as I do it. But uh, on the other hand, Ronnie shared something with me a number of months ago about, the, about learning to worship by not, not using his musical talent uh, for a time. And I think that's, that's a huge thought to consider is what, what do the, what do our giftings and our dynamics look like as we come together? I believe in teaching. I've been truly blessed by teaching. Um, but then I gave Larry a preview on this, by the way. So he, he had an idea what I was going to be talking about. Um, but are we putting, putting teaching to the 
sometimes to the uh, glorification of one gift at the unintentional suppression of others. Um, so for example, if, if you were to be getting a really good sermon right now, not the, the conversation and talking that you're hearing, um, that would be teaching, but most of you wouldn't speak. Most of us wouldn't participate. And yet sometimes I've found, and when we do have people talk, when people share, it's a little comment. Someone might make just a two sentence sharing that the Lord said. It might be like Dan sharing an, an image he had, and that might be more impactful than the, the other 20 minutes of the lesson. Because what, however the Lord revealed that to them, whatever it was shared was, was big, was huge. And how do we, how do we directly engage Christ as a, as a body together in the way that we pray? I mean, we, most of us, when we pray, I think we talk to him. We talk to him as a person. Um, but we don't necessarily do that as a, as, a, as a group as much. And one of the oddest things, and I tell you, I never thought it would work, was I was part, I visited a group, uh, a, a church in, in Texas, and so it was a very small church. They were, they were gathered in a, a large living room. And we spent 45 minutes to an hour, and nobody, they had agreed beforehand to, to pursue Christ throughout the week, and nobody was allowed to say anything to one another. Everything that was shared had to be either directly to Christ or sharing about Christ. So you could read a passage about his glory, about his power, about his person, about his body. Um, and it seemed, on, on one hand, you'd say, well, that seems kind of legalistic and rule-based. But it was amazing at how by laying that down, actually, we felt drawn in to Christ more because we weren't allowed to accidentally steal the stage <laughs> for 45 minutes. Um, and when you personally pray and ask for an answer and wait to receive an answer in an ascension or a journaling or something, we give him that opportunity. Um, but we don't necessarily do it as a body as much because it's just it's not the way we think. It's not what we're accustomed to. And if we consider taking a path like this, and I'd, I've talked to Larry about it as well, uh, even away from the traditional clergy structure, because I, I, we're all priests. If you, if you read Hebrews, it's, it's very, very clear. Um, and we're not getting anything taught otherwise here. Uh, it's just how we, how we operate. We, we, have, we have one mediator, uh, and that is Christ. And each member of the body is gifted in different ways to do this. Um, then think of how we might impact and, and help deal with some of the stresses we have as a church, just even with finances and, and looking at things. So I would, I guess my, my overall heart's cry here is to, uh, what is it if we go to Christ and take things to the cross, um, what are we willing to, to give up to see grown? Because I've seen, I've seen beautiful things and it's hard. The last, the last body I was part of that tried to truly engage and move away from the more traditional structure of a, of a worship team and a, and a, a pastor that was up preaching and everything, they, they, they successfully graduated from some of that. They couldn't forgive some of the members for bad singing. They, they couldn't forgive some of us, so they, we ended up playing professionally uh, done music. I will say Carrie Job is a much better singer than I ever will be. Um, I understand their preference. Um, but we became fearful of planters. We became fearful of outside instruction. And ultimately that fear became about that those that had lived successfully in body life and had seen the Lord dynamically grow in groups across the country, they had a different belief on suffering than we had. I mean, I still don't agree fully with their, with their doctrine of suffering. Because um, I don't think the Lord you know, necessarily wants us to suffer. He loves us. I, I don't have any de you know, detailed plans how I'm going to make Sam suffer so he grows up to be a better person. Um, that, that, I'd be a terrible parent to do that. Um, but they believed that due to their personal circumstances, and we refused to, to receive any of the gifts they could have shared with us of how to function. Um, all over a doctrine, and they only wanted to share and pour into our body as apostles for just six months. And they would have left any time we asked. But, we, but over the issue of, of, a, of a doctrine, we all worshiped Jesus. We were all brothers and sisters. I mean, we, we failed to do that. So that's just, that's just some, some food for thought here, because what I'm seeing is, is the body is raising up. More and more of our members are speaking. This is a direction we are going. Um, in, in deliberation with leadership. I mean, 
Larry and Vicky have been the most supportive of doing the Snapchats. I mean, Vicky shared about Snapchats and kind of blew some people's minds. Um, but how do, we, how do we lean forward more and engage in one another's lives both outside the church building and then just when we come together? Is there, is there something we can pursue and pray to the Lord on throughout the week? Just even like a debrief, Larry said the other day, or a sound, a, a, a brief bite, and bring together to gift one another. Because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not opposed to planning. I, I'm not, uh, I can't be. It, it would be wrong in my profession. Um, but it's, uh, there's so much opportunity if we ask and, and just wait and give opportunity here for the Lord to work. Um, just, just proposing it as a, as a thought, potentially think smaller and organic more than large and institutional. My favorite question asker. So I'm gonna ask him something that you don't have to worry about me ever doing to you out there, primarily because I've got a relationship with Adam and I don't think he's gonna mind this. So my question for you is, it seems that you've got something against what's going on right now in this room to a degree. And I'm asking, what is it that this structure that, for example, with somebody teaching in the ability to be able to ask them questions, even in the middle of what they're saying, which I think is awesome. Yeah. Um, and that's very different than I've seen in other places. But it sounds like you want something very different. So what is it that about this kind of setup that you don't like? Even the fact that we have to take turns talking uh, this this boldly, you had to get up out of your chair, face the face the mic, so to so to speak, and, and come out to do it mm -hmm. is uh, well. The only family I know that's large enough to arguably need a microphone is Cheryl's, and they're Amish, so we're not going to use one. Well, we use microphones uh, for not just the fact that people can hear, but the people on Zoom can hear. Otherwise, they can't hear. So there's some technology challenges because Zoom is part of what we do and that's also a little different. Yeah. So yeah. without the wires that we're, we're talking about, if the people were, the worship stuff was elsewhere, without that, they wouldn't be able to participate quite as well. You, I would probably beg to differ on, on that. We they have, can't hear. Well, then I would say that we've got companies all over the world that uh, talk into a laptop like this and are successfully heard and, and didn't need the building uh, to do it and all the wires. Um, Zoom meetings and such happen, happen all over. Um, I, I'm just, and technology has to be part of what we do. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not a complete Luddite. I'm not uh, completely going against, uh, going back to the, the Amish roots. I won't get in my buggy and leave. Um, but uh, so the idea of me coming up here seems to be a concern to you. My my children will speak in a circle, uh -huh. but they're less likely to go up to that microphone. Okay. Um, so even even if that microphone and not that specific microphone. So if there was but a even mic even if a microphone was in the center and able to, or a handful of microphones in the center able to pick up the voices of everyone in the in the the room. Right. Because I mean, there's large conference rooms that are that we do this in. I mean, you can actually book it in a hotel. Um, it's a little easier to talk because there's something kind of intimidating about picking one of these up and standing up in front of everyone versus, uh, versus Evie talking with you just sitting at a table or in a circle. Right. Now, that could um, be your own personal perspective, too, which is what I was asking. For. It, I mean, it, it could be. Because other people, could, like, I don't feel awkward coming up because I'm weird that way. I know there's others <laughs> that might feel awkward about coming up. Totally cool. So if Considering In most that people sense, fear public speaking more than death. I, yeah. I, I, I think so the idea more. of having everybody mic'd might, but but what the the fact that we would everybody would be mic'd, we'd be potentially sitting kind of like we are. Is that a problem? If you want to focus on naturally structure a room so that you focus on on one member. Um, no, but I mean, I, I personally wouldn't wouldn't encourage it because just due to the nature where I'm sitting, not even my speaking, ever you tend to look to the front. It's just our it's our nature, um, and so you might miss uh, you might miss what the Lord is doing with someone else who might feel more inclined to speak in a little less formal type situation. 
I would say we get a lot more uh, speaking in a, in a smaller group, admittedly, on uh, on a Tuesday night mm -hmm. than we than we get in a, a, a traditional Friday night. Right. And a a big part of that because the group sizes do vary, but it's it's small groups either place. Um, is I think just kind of the natural setting of it. We, we feel more comfortable engaging with others if there's not a, uh, uh, a quote unquote center of attention, just kind of focal point, if you will. Because there's two focal points, you're, you're at one and I'm at, at the other, and then it moves to the back once we start singing. Sure, um, so just a reminder, I'm challenging him directly. And I'm I know I'm not Ronnie, gonna so. do that with you guys. No, Ronnie knows he's got permission to challenge me anytime, yeah. so. Uh, I appreciate it. So uh, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Um, I hope this isn't off topic. I'll, some of the conversation here really inspired me. Um, it's just really strong in me to honor Richard and Jen. Um, one of my favorite experiences in Joyland is hearing when they went to Burning Man, and you've done it a few times. It was just a wonderful, unorthodox, brazen presentation of the love of God to people that religious people would think Jesus has nothing to do with. And I just love it. Um, to me, it, it breaks through some of the barriers that we may or may not have. Yeah. And it's inspired me to have conversations with people to where they're getting closer to Christ. And a lot of it is thinking about some of the testimonies you guys have had at Burning Man. There's people I now talk to that I never would have talked to. There's just, we have nothing in common at all, and it, it's literally happening in my life right now, and we've become authentic friends, dear, cl close friends, me and these people I'm talking about. And all of a sudden, I'm effective for Christ. And a lot of it was, I'm like, well, look at what Richard and Jen are doing. Look at that. that that's amazing to me. So I just wanted to thank you guys, because to me, some of the things that you talk about, some of the maybe the standoffishness or, or that may or may not even happen here, the brazen love of God just, it, to me, sh shuts it all down, like breaks through all of it. Um, I, I am now wonderful friends to two people I have almost nothing in common with. And it's because God was telling me they have encountered a very hurtful religious movement in Woodland Park and they are scared of me, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And it is the love that I have for them I want you to show. I did not give them a checklist. I did not see how they are going to comply with my view of what they should look like. Um, and I basically kicked all theology out the window and went with the love of Jesus Christ. And I really thought about Richard and Jen, and it's been really effective. You've been wonderful examples. So. And that's because you didn't feel compelled either to, uh, you didn't have to close the deal. As I was talking with Stephen about earlier this week, there wasn't a performance obligation there. Um, I, I think that's beautiful, that's natural, because you spoke to them as people, children of God. Agreed, by the way. <laughs> They're great. Adam, thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate the fact that you're sharing your ideas. I think what you're talking about is just uh, a personal relationship with one another, you know, some more intimacy as a group. I mean, we're certainly small enough to be just a large family, and, uh, and most of us feel that way, you're that we are a family. family. And it's like Richard said, we've tried many things, and like Ronnie said, we're trying to do everything to kind of open up communication, to make people feel free, uh, to share their ideas, to, uh, and, and I'm thankful to Vicki coming up with the snap, snap Talks mm -hmm. because we've got to know more about each other. And even though it's difficult sometimes for some people to share, especially in, like you're saying, sharing in front of a group, if they're willing to do that, it just opens up a whole new um, intimacy with that individual, knowing more about them. We got to le learn so much more about your wife last week, and yeah. now you this week. And of course, I've talked to you a few times. And, yeah. and it's just wonderful what God does. And having been in a very large body of 14,000, and having been into a body of, on an average, maybe 25 to 30 people, 
I'll tell you what happens in this family of 25 to 30 is nothing like the large bodies. The large bodies, the only way they have intimacy is to have small groups. And that's what they thrive on. Otherwise, you don't really have a church. You just have people yeah. coming and listen to a preacher. But one of the things that grabbed my attention, and we have done that before, was the circle effect, where nobody's the center of attention unless you had like a hand mic that you passed around. Occasionally, we could try that. And just Larry, even when he's teaching, being a part of that, and he starts it off and hands the mic around. Um, it is a little different in the Bible study. I agree with you. Even being on Zoom and being a part of that Bible study, you feel like you're a part of a very small family that's sharing a lot and not afraid to ask questions and not uh, fearful about are they looking at me? Am I going to be yeah. the center of attention? That doesn't happen in the Bible group. And, and hopefully we'll get to that point with the church, too. Uh, it's, it's even difficult for me sometimes to call this church because it really isn't uh, a church per se. We, we prefer just Joyland or Joyland life uh, and whatever that means for people. I think the intimacy is coming more. I, I'm certainly glad of, of what I saw Tuesday night with Holly. Uh, challenge people a little bit about the ascensions. I mean, they've been going on for years and, you know, through Joyland even yeah. on Mondays and Wednesdays. And, uh, and it's been a wonderful experience for all those that are participating. And uh, I'd like to see more of that happening. At one time, we were doing it as a part of the church service a couple times. I think, unfortunately, a lot of people were uncomfortable with it. And, and, and we kind of backed away from it. But Larry's still unsure that there was going on at least a couple times a week. Mm -hmm. And recently I've had you and Cheryl join us and, uh, and that's been great. And what you've had to share has been wonderful. So, um, but thank you for sharing. It, it's good. It, it's nice that we can be open to different ideas. And like Ronnie says, we've tried to do everything we can to open that up, but that doesn't mean we have to stop there. So, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. For the record, I probably came across a lot more negative than I mean to be. I apologize. I'm not trying to be negative. I just texted someone, a fr friend I haven't spoken with for years yesterday, saying I am part of the most fully participatory uh, Western church body I'm currently aware of. <laughs> so It's true. And I appreciate you bringing this up as a conversation. It's good to talk about these things, right? Yeah. And it's always been on my mind, too. Um, you know, how can we do things like this? You know, be more intimate and have worship that comes from our heart, you know, rather than from the stage uh, where we're one body, one mind, like the book of Acts. Yeah. yeah. They were all one when they gathered together. And, you know, I've longed for that most of my Christian life. But I think we've come the closest, right? And you, yes. with a venue like this, you know, we can't we can't really dance around without the music, you know. And the and the it's I love to see the kids dancing and um, and doing the big worship thing. It's and it's fun. So I like that. But yeah. and you can't really do that without this kind of a building or the Zoom, which is, I think is very unique. And I really love. The fact that we do that and that we have fellowship afterwards and before and yeah. I mean, I don't know if I'd change much other than yeah. maybe trying to get in a circle, which we've done. And that's kind of awkward and hard to do to get people to participate because we're all facing each other. <laughs> but I think it's OK. It's good for awkward, us. Though. It's good for us to push beyond our comfort zone. So that's all I got to say. Thank you. It, I, I fully acknowledge it's 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 awkward to get to know one another on that level and yeah. look at each other like that. Yeah. Um, I think it can be worth it if you press through the awkward. Stephen. Hi. So uh, thinking about this topic over there, I was just asking the Lord, and I He reminded me of uh, some testimonies to do with building community. Um, He's constantly reminded me of Noah, and um, the word, the name Noah, means a rest, and that's what the literal translation is. So, this idea of entering his rest in Hebrews, 
is adopting um, uh, characteristics uh, like Noah and the story of Noah? And um, how do you find community between lions and giraffes? Because on the ark, you know, the lion's going to eat the giraffe, right? Um, so uh, a, some testimonies I've discovered in my own life about building community. Um, I went on a mission trip in, uh, to Mas North Macedonia in 2021. And um, being prophetic, I sat, sat down before the trip and asked the Lord for prophetic words as to what he wanted us to do. And I have my list of things. These are, this is what the Lord's saying. These are the things he wants to do. Um, and my the leader of the mission group um, on occasions had contrary ideas. And um, it was great when we lined up, but when he had, no, the Lord said this, and I was in, no, the Lord has this, uh, I, I think on one occasion I stormed off in a huff and um, didn't, didn't really, wasn't very um, uh, gracious and I wasn't very good about it. Um, and um, so uh, there, was a, there were a few moments where there was a bit of breakdown between the community. So because I was aware of this, um, and, and in retrospect, I think sometimes I, you, you can see things in retrospect. Sometimes I think maybe I had heard correctly and he had heard incorrectly, and other times he'd heard correctly and I had, hadn't, heard, I hadn't heard right. So um, there was that breakdown. So I, I, this year, going out to Macedonia, I was really aware I didn't want this to happen, this breakdown uh, amongst uh, the prophetic words. He's saying this, he, he believes this, I believe this. I, I wanted there to be community. So I took it to the Lord, and I asked him how to navigate this. And he basically he led me to Revelation 3.7 that he opens doors that no man can close and close doors that no man can open. And he said, who does no man include? I'm like, does it include you, Stephen? Yeah. And who does it, who, does it include your leader? Yeah. Okay. So first clash. This happened before we went out. Uh, my leader had decided we need to go to a town over there, to stay in that town over there. And I'd heard from the Lord that we need to stay in the town over there. So I could have gone to him and said, no, 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 God said, you know, we need to go and st stay in that town. And he was, no, 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 God's told us to stay in that town. So I said, to the, the Lord showed me, he said, use this, use this key, the key of David. And so he said, you don't need to communicate it with your leader. He said, pray this, Lord, if his name was Kevin, if Kevin was, if Kevin is correct, I thank you that you, you, I thank you that you close a door to the one I think that no man can open. But if if I've heard correctly, I think you can close a door to go into that town, and that no man can open, including myself, the leader, and open a door to this one over here. I just prayed that. The next day, my leader rang me up and said, Stephen. I think I've made a, uh, I made a mistake. I think we need to go to this town over here, which you're talking about. And throughout the whole trip, I was using the keys of David to navigate uh, situations to try and bring that unity. And we didn't clash once. There were, there were, it even came down to um, uh, loudness of music. Seriously. Um, I struggle with loud music. I struggle with um, uh, when I was on the minibus. I like to be quiet and listen to the Lord. And um, the leader, he he loved to just pump up the volume and play music all the time. So, <laughs> so there's, a, there's a there's a personal difference. So I remember at one point, you know, I would just sit and I asked the Lord, Lord, I'm really struggling with this with the, the loudness of the music being played, I'd quite like some quiet. And I went, Lord, thank you that you open a door to quietness that no man can close. Or you, uh, and, uh, and I prayed this, and literally two seconds later, the leader switched the music off. Um, because he, is that, is that what he wanted? That's, that, that, so I wasn't, I wasn't directly 
I wasn't really even going to the leader. I was just taking it to the Lord and allowing the Lord to sort it out. And on another occasion, he was playing loud music, and I said, Lord, I'd really like some quiet. And the Lord said, no, on this occasion, I want you to persevere and um, uh, to, 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 to be gracious to your leader and allow him to have his loud music because that's what I want in this moment. So there's this element of when we, um, when we come and just um, come, into that, come into the ark, that place of intimacy with the Father, and we, 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 we navigate the issues through him, he can he can bring the, he can bring the unity, and he can form that community. Uh, going back to the Noah, how do you get lions and antelopes to get along with each other, and anteaters and ants, uh, without on the ark? How do you get that sense of community where everybody gets on? It's by being drawn into the ark, drawn into the Father's heart, and as we are drawn into the Father's heart, the closer the animals get to the ark the more intimacy and more community we'll find. So it's just that deep, passionate uh, drive to, to, to go into the ark and f- find that rest in the Father's love. Stephen was sharing about Noah on the, the ride up here. I don't think anyone's quite talked about Noah to me the way Stephen has. It's, uh, for those of you who haven't spoken with him yet, that's a wonderful member of Christ's body. <laughs> so, but... Um, Yes, yeah, I mean, after following that, it's like, wow, like that's exactly what I love about this church is that I have never found another group that opens the door and the floor like that um, to just let anybody, like the amount of people that we have that the first time they just come in the door and they are like pulled up to the front to talk or to share something or to sing a song, it's just, Incredible. So, like, I see what you're saying, and I think that is so amazing because there is so, so much more. Like, he's challenging us, like, how much more, like, stepping out of these these boundaries that we don't even, might not even question until we really think about it. Like, what what are the boundaries that could be broken? What could be outside of those? And yet, I just want to just, like, commend this, this yes. this family for i mean this is this place is amazing like what i do see where where strangers will be pulled off the streets and they will sit through it and you can tell that that they are not people that would be drawn to a church and you have no idea why they're here and yet they will be here they, they will sit through the whole thing and you might never see them again um and then other people the first time here and they will share something and you might never see them again but it's like, wow, over and over, I've seen that happen. We had someone lead singing on their, her first time here. <laughs> yeah. So. And I, that just, that does not happen in any other place I've ever been a part of. And yeah, go for it. It's beautiful. And like, I can just say like a testimony in my own life, like this place has broken off barriers for me to actually be able to speak in front of you guys, like. That is not something I was ever able to do before this church. And like even the second like Snapchat that I did, like I was actually excited to do it. And I'm like, that is so strange, Lord. Like who is the person that I was? Because that wasn't me. That was that was pain. That was lies that I was carrying. And this place just gave the ability to break that off because it, there is something that just it's it's family here. It really, like you can feel. It is the body of Christ, and yet there is so much more that we can go into that. So, yeah. I love C.S. Lewis to reference him further up and further in is at the very end of the, the Chronicles of Narnia. Um, that's, yes. <laughs> so that was just what I wanted to, to broach as a conversation uh, tonight. I do notice that uh, our, the, the first, yo, Larry, anything you want to uh, to add to this? Oh, and uh, not Vicky, I think, is your your screen name. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but uh, thank you for this opportunity. I I just wanted to. Uh, I, I've been really blessed by Joyland. I want I want to reiterate what Jessica said. I I love this body. I'm not c- trying to come across as a malcontent. 
I uh, just trying to open our minds and Larry, forgive me if this one's a little bit too too pointed. One of my favorite Garfield cartoons is, um, yes, I am referencing Garfield to compare to about two scriptures, so take that as you will, was uh, it's uh, how to look skinnier. And um, his advice was to uh, hang out with people fatter than you. Um, and I think uh, Joyland looks very, very skinny. <laughs> but uh, we can be, uh, I think the Lord's got wonderful things and can, can make us even more fit. Actually, the only thing I want to share is the thought that the Lord put in my head, uh, Jessica, when you were speaking, when you guys were dialoguing back and forth. Imagine what it must look and feel like to step from a finite world into an infinite world. And I don't know, I just was a thought that was kind of inspiring, actually, for why it's worth asking these questions and trying things. Uh, Imagine what it looks like to step from a finite world into an infinite world. Yes. One more comment from me. I'm glad you're part of our community. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you for your time. I think we can get Laurel. <laughs>